In this video, I'm gonna break down a clip from the most popular video on Magnus Media YouTube channel. Once Tencent built their monopoly in China, they began expanding abroad and essentially went on one of the biggest shopping sprees in history. They've invested heavily in companies like Reddit, Tesla, Discord, Spotify, Snapchat, and Universal Music. And those are just a couple of the many hundreds of companies outside of China that Tencent are now involved with. All right, in order to pull off this edit, first of all, I'm gonna also have to simplify it even further. So when you start looking at this clip, you will notice that it has three parts. The first part is the part where we have the map of the world followed by the message bubbles and then followed by this 100 percent or 100 plus thing so basically you will see these are three parts so the first part to me it looks to be the hardest one then the second part is more of the easy easy and then the last one is the very easy one so when you look at our background it's blue at the top and then it fades into black how did i do that so when you look here i pre-composed it down here so that i can be having it in a container so when you open up the background you will see it's a black solid but then how did I get the blue into this black solid? That's where the effects come in. You will see in order to pull that off, I used a gradient ramp. A part of it is blue and then this part here is black. So when I move it around here, you will see it changing. And then when I move this other part, you will see it's also changing. So that's basically what is inside the background layer. So when you come back here into the main comp, you will see that we also have two more effects. We have the noise and then the Gaussian blur. The reason why I use the noise, you know, when you just have this weird gradient, it's always bringing some banding. Those weird lines inside there so basically what i did i included some bit of noise and then the gaussian blur its importance was to make a smooth transition from blue to then black so the next part was the map of the world so when i open it up here you will see it's a map which gets filled by this ink spreading from one side to another and you may be wondering how did i pull it off first of all when you look at this we have two layers inside the pre-composition of the world map number one we have the image of the map and then we have below the ink so basically when you look at this i added a track mat which is the alpha track mat so when i remove it from the alpha track mat and i add no track mat you will see that we are having a planet and then this grayish thing behind plus this filling thing so basically what is this thing doing uh, when i open up the ink layer you will see this is a simple stock footage which i downloaded from youtube and if you want to use it i've put everything in the container down below you can get it plus this project file so as you can see i wanted this thing to start when it's already there but this video wasn't allowing me so i decided to add a shape which is white here or as it covers the entire scene with black i then added a black shape in order to create the continuity of this entire effect of the ink so when i close it up and then go back to the earth only all this composition which involves the earth you will see that we still have the earth and then we still have our thing but then you're wondering how did i pull off this why is this gray and red yet in this pre-composition it's white and black so basically how i did that i added a tint effect on the ink layer parts which are black they were to be red and then the parts which were white i added some bit of gray so that i can pull that off so now i want it to be contained inside the map of the world so what i did for that i just changed the track match to alpha you will see this is completely transparent and you won't see anything from behind because the track mat is doing its magic so next we have uh, the second thing in line it is the t to represent tencent so basically when you look at it it's just a t there is nothing very fancy about it there are no weird effects on it so when you look at it it's just a shape but then this shape it has a mask when you look at it here and inside this mask i added some bit of keyframes to animate it from the bottom then as it moves upwards and you can see when you look at them i added some bit of easy ease that's why it's just a, a bell shape thingy so a dome or bell i don't know what that is and then the next part was the line graph basically the line graph is the easiest part so it starts when it's not there and then it spreads from one side to another until it finishes up to this other corner so how did i do that so inside the line graph we are having a shape so basically when you look at these shapes i created a shape with a pen tool as you can see here as you may do it like this and then i just added a stroke to it now how did i animate the stroke you may ask so basically for the stroke what i did i added an effect so you come here you open it up and then you look for 
trim path. This is the effect which I used. From the start, it is zero, and then as it expands, it goes up to 100. And 100 is always the part where your end point was as you were drawing this line graph. For this next one, because it is exactly inside what we created already, I just duplicated the layer below and then I animated it in a different way. You'll see that I offset the keyframes slightly towards the right so that when this starts, this doesn't start at the same time. It takes some bit of time. And then as it stretches outwards, it also follows it. But then it takes more time. And now it doesn't reach exactly at the end point. So I definitely found ways where it's close to the original. And then I put it somewhere close to where the original video puts it. And then I just locked it there with a keyframe. The graphical keyframe representation, you'll see how it was moving. It's just also a dome shape, more like easy ease. I used easy ease for that as well. Coming back to the main composition. So the next part is the text biggest shopping spree in history. So basically, I'm gonna break it down one by one. So in this case, I was only animating two variables. Number one, opacity and then position. So when you look at this, it starts at zero. The opacity is at zero. And then as it moves, it goes to opacity 100%. And now when it comes to the position, it starts at uh, below or down, and then it moves upwards. So I use this, it starts slowly and then it accelerates and then it goes back slowly so that it gives that effect of speeding up in the middle and then it slows down. So when it came to the shopping, you will see it's also almost the same thing. For this, I didn't easy ease the keyframes. I just left them linear because its movement is linear, as you may see here. For the sprees, you will see that nothing animated there. It just appears. That's why even its layer starts from there. For in, when I bring in in there, for in, we also use only one variable, and that is the position keyframes. You will see it starts from below and then it moves slightly upwards. And then for history, um, I also animated the opacity and then the position. So basically all the magic happened inside this graph editor. It starts very fast and then it slowly, gradually reduces the speed until it reaches where it's supposed to be. So when I put everything together, it made the effect which looks, it kind of looks cool. And it's actually the same way how it was animated in the Magnets Media video. So now when you look at this, I had also forgotten to explain the same thing on the line graph. You see it's glowing, okay? So how did I pull that off? I added an effect called deep glow. Maybe you can get it, but then you can also use glow. So number two, when it came to these words, I also added a glow effect. So for the first part, it's done. So next is the message bubbles. Okay, let me break it down to you, okay? So message bubbles or the company bubbles, you will see. You see, I duplicated them by just duplicating and changing the logo, then the words of the company or the name of the company, then the description and everything. So basically, let me just open one of them and show you how I actually did it. So when it came to the actual thing, first of all, you will see that this thing is broken down into shapes. So to start off with this, I started with the rectangle. And then next, it was the circle. So basically, I named it small big circle. So I made two circles. This was a duplicate. And then I made a big circle. This was a duplicate of the small circle. So for the small circle, this is a bit bigger or the bigger circle is a bit bigger. And then you'll see it has another shape behind it because when I expand it here, you will see that we have the rectangle and then the ellipse. This is going to be like a way to hide everything I don't want to be shown. Meaning that this circle and everything past this circle or anything beyond this shape, they are not going to be seen. And how are we going to hide them is by adding a track mat. So basically, you see now it is hidden and now you can't see it. You may be wondering, why did I even make this box up there? You see, when I was animating this rectangle, you see it moves inwards. So it is moving inside this shape, which is now invisible. So as it's moving, the same applies to this circle. This circle is also moving. But now we don't want to also see the big circle. So now we also had to use the track mat. So now when it came to the logo, this had to be filled. But before we go to that, I also have to first uh, explain to you this triangle, which is moving in circles, you see? So first of all, I just got its anchor point and then I put it in the middle of the shape. So that when I'm animating scale, you see, it starts from uh, zero and then it expands to the size that I feel like it's okay. It has to be moving almost on the edge of this circle. But how can we pull that off? The straightforward way would be pulling the anchor point and put it right in the center of the circles that it is moving. But then I thought about it because when I'm doing it like that, definitely it will be scaling from this part outwards. 
and then I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to scale from exactly where it is. So in order to create another anchor point, I had to introduce a null object. So in order for you to, you can easily go to layer, new, and then you open up a null object. Or you can use this shortcut as you may see it here. So I parented the triangle to the null object. The circular movements are controlled by the null object as you may see in this illustration. So it moves and then it goes back. And now how did I do that? You will see the magic is also in these keyframes, okay? So basically that's how I did that. Plus next, when it comes to the animation of the, the rectangle, you'll see that when it is moving outwards, it's the position. So it starts close to the start and then it ramps out very fast and then it slows down slightly or gradually. But now we had to include the text, the logos and the description down below. You see, when you look at the original video, you will see that the logo stays in the same place and it's only this shape which is moving. So what I did, I got the logo and now in order to put it inside this shape, I had to first place it somewhere and then I had to add a track mat on it and that's the alpha track mat. When the size changes, the shape of the logo remains intact as the size of the shape changes. And then the next thing, it's the name. When I even bring back the transparency, you will see that it's visible up there. And that's not cool. That's not what we are pushing. So I want to hide it. And how can I hide it? I also introduce the magic of the track mat. So you see this logo, it's moving only up and down. Okay though it is having some bit of keyframe magic and then you will see it starts slowly and then it ramps up and then comes to rest. But in order to hide it from being shown before this thing comes in, I added a triangle. So you see this triangle, it's just like a way to block it from being seen. So this is blocking it out. But then we also have this nagging rectangle out there. I'm gonna add also a track mat. Now it's hidden. So when it moves up, you can see it. The description is pretty much the same technique. Also, we just had to create another rectangle which is also moving. And this rectangle, we also did the same thing, adding a track mat. So you will see now the track mat makes it appear and then makes it disappear when it moves backwards. So basically, yeah, that's it. So I did the same thing. I changed every logo. There were around six logos. So I decided to make those same steps where to be replicated in all six logos. I'm not going to show you that because you've already gotten it from this first one, okay? So now the last part of our design, you'll see we have the 100 plus, but now it has some bit of gradient on it. So you'll see that the gradient is made by the gradient ramp. So we have two effects, have gradient ramp and then the camera lens blur to create that rock focus effect as it is coming up. I animated the opacity and then the blurness. And then this word which comes in, like it types itself in, actually it's just an effect which is inbuilt. I think it's a preset in After Effects which can help you do this. You just put the head, display head where you want it to start and then you add an effect called typewriter. So this effect typewriter, it helps you from nothing and then it types itself until where it stops. Where it stops is where you're going to have your last part of the word which you're trying to animate or the part of the statement you want to animate. This is also easy stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it in the department of design. Now the second part or the most amazing part, it's the animation part. So basically this is all 3D and I decided to use the 3D camera. So number one, I had to change all these layers which were going to be animated into 3D objects. Now you can see I didn't make the background 3D because the background was going to remain intact. I opened up a camera, I created a new camera. So when you go here in layer, new, you open up a camera. So I had to come up with a camera. So when you come up here, you go to the camera settings. I'm going to show you that the camera which I used in this case was the 24 millimeter camera preset. And then it is a two node camera. I wanted to make it wide, but not super wide. So that's the camera I used for this animation. Based on the original video or based on what we are trying to create, it starts when it is zooming out. So in order for you to see this, I'm going to open up a second view so that you can see the camera. So what I did, I actually used this part to animate the camera. I brought it on this point, put the keyframes, and then I moved it where I wanted it to stop. And then I just moved the camera to see exactly where I want it to be so that it looks exactly how it is in the actual video. And then when it came to this next part, it was to be moved from bottom to top. So how did I do that? 
okay the camera was making some weird changes so it wasn't really moving very well that's why i decided to also add a now object so for this now object it gets me the ability to change the camera movements but then also not affecting the actual camera movement so basically that's how the now object works and then I apparented the camera to the now object so everything the now object does the camera will also do it so the now object what it helped me do here was the now object was moving the position upwards the camera was still in the same exact spot where it was I copied the keyframes around here and then I pasted them here because the camera wasn't moving it was only the now object which was now controlling the position of the camera and then when it moved to the point which i felt that it was actually the best point i wanted it to be i stopped there and then i copied the keyframe where it was supposed to stop moving i pasted it here so that when i start moving the camera the second time it won't mess up the first keyframes i created so now this is the most tricky part to move from this point to this other point you may see the camera was moving in two directions the camera was moving forward at the same time upwards upwards downwards okay the camera was moving in a weird way so if you want to pull off any camera movement you can only achieve that with a null object the camera for it what it was doing it was pushing inwards and then the null object what it was doing it was moving the camera upwards and how did i make this rock focus you may ask because honestly i switched off the camera depth of field I didn't want to use that because well it can mess up things so I decided to just leave it out and then I just make it manually using the camera lens blur so for the message bubbles when we open them up here company bubbles you will see that it was moving relative to what we have around here so when you have this 100 as it started being shown in the video you'll see that it was completely out of focus and now i put my focus point on the point where it, they were completely blurry so basically as this one is coming into focus as 100 is coming into focus the message bubbles or the campaign bubbles were coming out of focus and now the text came in and it wrote itself perfectly like that so when i play it back to you you will see all the camera movements were really cool and everything went on perfectly so yeah that's pretty much it if you like these types of videos if you think that these videos are something you may like to watch just let me know so that i can make more of them and don't forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel it's 100 percent free if you want stuff like this to come consistently 